मजा करेंगे माइक इज ऑन एंड इफ यू विश यू कैन कम जॉब थैंक यू सो मच मैम सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग मार्च ऑफ टाइम बिकॉज मैम हेज ऑलरेडी इंट्रोड्यूस मी सो आई बिगिन by talking about uh, managing diversity by talking about our diversity that sir uh, very well talked about apparently what we need to tell the west is that we never really had to manage our diversity because we already knew what is our diversity and we have been living with it since thousands of years now so the art of managing diversity is not something that we need to learn now it is apparently something that the west definitely does need to learn so uh moving forward have you guys noticed that uh today our diversity has come to be understood as very negative as something that impacts our society and uh, i have heard youngsters talking that hamare desh mein languages itni hai log itne prakar ke hain ki hum kabhi kisi consensus pe nahi aa aa sakte hain kisi bhi problem ko leke and and that is why they say that we we can never really reach to a solution i believe i wonder ki ye kab hua ki hum apni diversity ko hamara hamara ek liability samajhne lage how it is that we look at our diversity so negatively so pessimistically and while one while seeking answers to those questions i then found uh, Uh, came across this book, The Soul of India, which is written by Bipin Chandrapal. Bipin Chandrapal ji uh, was a freedom fighter. He was a member of the Triumvirate Lal Bal Pal. Uh, he he is very well known among youngsters, among uh, the elders of our country. And his, uh, but his contributions, his, his literary contributions, are not really talked about. And therefore, I believe this book is re- really very important. when it comes to talking about nationality and understanding bharatiya nationalism bipin chandrapal ji begins with talking about three classes of english works that have been written on bharat now it is also through these three classes of english works that we today understand what bharat is first is the european orientalist the european orientalists have written a lot on bharat but uh, if we notice we will find a very pessimistic view of what bharat is through their works the second a uh, work is by european christian missionaries who obviously had a very pure religious agenda because they obviously came with a uh, mission of not just civilizing us but but also called civilizing us but also converting us and the third we will find uh, anglo indian officials who applied generalize generalizations of european history and culture over india and that is also how our understanding of caste system developed uh, today Uh, now through various stories bipin chandrapal ji tells us why all of those works never really truly understood bharat and what bharatiya society or what bharatiya culture is and then he goes on to uh, elaborate upon three reasons for why we uh, why the europeans have never truly been able to understand bharat the first reason is that they have had mere sense contact with us with our traditions now what does that mean mere sense contact means ki they have had physical uh, contact with our uh, with our intellectual life with our culture with our tradition uh, ha- bhartiya gyan parampara mein uh, basically teen tarike ke uh, praman hote hain research methodology jab ab hum karte hain kisi bhi cheez ko hame samajhna hota hai to teen praman hote hain pratyaksh anuman aur shastra praman shastra praman primary is the is the very primary level of understanding something जो लिटरेली वर्क्स के थ्रू या जो हम देख रहे हैं उसके थ्रू हम समझते हैं सो बिपिन चंद्रपाल जी सेज दैट द यूरोपियंस हैव ओनली हैड वेरी फिजिकल सुपरफिशियल कॉन्टैक्ट विद भारत एंड दैट इज वाई देव नेवर ट्रूली अंडरस्टूड भारत सेकेंड रीजन इज देर एग्जिस्ट फंडामेंटल डिफरेंस बोथ ऑफ मेंटल टेम्परमेंट एंड स्पिरिचुअल कैरेक्टर बिटवीन द हिंदूज एंड द क्रीक्स हाउ इज दैट ही लैबरेट्स अपॉन टू व्यूज वी हैव टू वेज ऑफ व्यूइंग एट द होल understanding the ultimate reality now before i uh, go ahead let me also tell you that this book is extremely philosophical in nature 
there is a lot of philosophy engaged in this and so i'll i need all of your attention to really understand and make sense of this we have two ways of viewing at the whole first way is through uh, is viewing the whole through its parts what does that mean when we view the whole through its parts we basically analyze we uh, differentiate hum us cheez ko todte hain kisi bhi cheez ko hame agar samajhna hai to when we take the first way हम उस चीज को तोड़ते हैं एंड देन वी अराइव एट द कॉन्क्रीट यूनिवर्स द ग्रीक माइंड हैज बिकम प्रीएमिनेंटली डेफिनेटिव एनालिटिकल ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड रियलिस्टिक इट इज मोर प्रोन टू डिफाइन एंड डिफ्रेंशिएट दैन टू कंबाइन एंड इंटीग्रेट इट इज मोर एबल टू एनालाइज दैन टू सिंथेसाइज नो वॉट इज द इंडियन व्यू वॉट इज द भारतीय व्यू वी लुक एट द होल इन द पार्ट वॉट इज दैट वी तो वी हैव एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट द होल एंड द पार्ट आर नॉट रियली डिफरेंट फ्रॉम इच अदर दे हैव बोथ ऑफ देम हैव वेरी सिमिलैरिटी सो इफ वी इफ वी कैन इफ वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड इवन अ पार्ट ऑफ द होल आई थिंक इट विल बी इजियर टू रीच एट द होल टू रीच एट द अल्टीमेट रियालिटी टू रीच एट द एब्सट्रैक्ट यूनिवर्सल विच वी कॉल निर्गुण ब्रह्म सो इट इज ऑल्सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस दैट वी हैव एक्सट्रीमली डिवर्स थॉट्स वी हैव एक्सट्रीमली डिवर्स स्कूल ऑफ थॉट्स it is basically because fundamentally this view of uh, this way of viewing at the whole that we we can have this diversity and we don't uh, don't get to see this diversity in europe or in the west so the way of hindus has been of metaphysics we have trained the mind to constantly transcend every form of definition and relativity to reach and re- realize the indefinable and the absolute third reason why europeans could not understand us because he says that the european is the spoiled child of modern humanity the europeans have been so much consumed by their super, uh, superiority complex that they think that the whole world is have been conquered by them and therefore this attitude incapacitates them to correctly understand other world cultures so it is on the account of these serious intellectual and moral disabilities that the europeans have failed to truly understand bharat then he says that to correct, correctly present india one must therefore first be himself an indian not merely by birth but in heart and spirit now being an indian in heart and spirit what does that mean and what is the first step that we should take uh, towards understanding bharat is we need to understand the superman of bharat he has talked about the superman of bharat now who are those superman of bharat uh, those men uh, our upanishads have defined them these men have had all the knots of his heart cut through that is all his self regarding desires absolutely killed all his spiritual doubts completely dispelled and all his karma that is the seeds of all possible self regarding activities in the future whether here or hereafter absolutely worn out agar hum simple bhasha mein kahe to ye superman of bharat koi uh, koi aur nahi balki hamare rishi muni hamare acharya हम वो लोग जिन्होंने हमारी एजुकेशन को अपहोल्ड करके रखा है जिन्होंने हमारे ट्रेडिशन कल्चर को अपहोल्ड करके रखा है सुपरमैन ऑफ दो आर द सुपरमैन ऑफ भारत एंड इट इज द होली मैन ऑफ भारत हु हैव फ्रॉम जनरेशन टू जनरेशन मेंटेन द जेंशियल कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ आवर कल्चर वाई प्रोग्रेसिवली एडजस्टिंग आर सोशल रिलीजियस लाइफ एंड इंस्टीट्यूशन टू द चेंजिंग कंडीशन ऑफ देयर पीपल बोथ फिजिकल एंड सोशल so it is on account of this detachment of rishi muni banne ka process kafi mushkil hai aasan nahi hai we need to learn the art of detaching ourselves detaching ourselves from our family from our society and have and the ability to look at the whole uh, in a very pure way so that uh, no uh, we, it it should not get manipulated your vision should not get manipulated by physical or by any constraints so it is on account of this detachment and idealism that a community controlled by a most rigid system of castes rarely suffered from class war or developed any violent spirit of mutual jealousy or recrimination among its members until we commenced very recently to improve and reform it by the individualistic capitalistic and competitive class distinctions of the imported socio political ideals of modern european civilization so our idealism have always helped us to transcend all forms of social inequalities due to convention or culture and realize the divine as much in the brahman as in the parya and that is why i said that we never really had to learn how to manage our diversity 
Now, what what is the difference between Europe and Bharat? What has been the difference in the history of social ethical evolution of Bharat and Europe? Europe may there have there have been a faithful discharge of the obligations imposed upon the individual. So, individual may ya to church impose kar raha hai kuch cheeze in ek individual pe ya fir unka ruler unka king kuch impose kar raha hai. But that has not been the case in Bharat. Europe may there have been a revolt for the rights, but we never find any revolt, any instance of a revolution in our history. And why is that? We will we, we'll soon come to that. We have had a society based on duty, society based on dharma. And dharma has been the very basis of our civilization. And that has been the basic difference why Europe and Bharatiya society are different from each other. Or Europe may just tarike se rebellious and reform karne ka, ki jo, uh, uh, tradition raha hai. That reform tradition has never been in Bharat because wo reform karne ka kaam koi political institution ka nahi tha. It was on the, the onus light upon the, those Rishi Muni, those supermen of Bharat. And those were the people who took our country ahead uh, in, in a very spiritual manner. The word of Indian evolution is dharma while the word of Europe in evolution is right. So dharma is the basis of our civilization and dharma is not religion. This is something that we need to understand and make a very clear distinction because even in even today our in our day-to-day -day language we have come to uh, come to accept that religion and dharma are basically the same or we never really take uh, the efforts to differentiate between those two. So dharma is that which holds together the different elements of a thing and thus combines them into one organic whole. It is cosmic and universal and therefore essentially specific in person. Now there lies a very deep philosophical thought behind this sentence. Religion is that which binds men together. It is ex exclusively human and social. Now reflections of libertarian thought in the idea of dharma. The closest translation of dharma in English can be the law of being. It is not the religion but the law of being. This law of being is not imposed upon the objects but it grows from within through the general course of their history and evolution. And this is called the regulative idea of evolution. Dharma therefore organizes and expresses itself differently in different objects. So when, when we say that it expresses itself differently in different objects, we are basically talking about Swadharma. The Swadharma ka hum, uh, concept aaj bhool chuke hai because we have so much come to uh, practice Western thoughts and Western traditions that we have really forgotten what we actually had and what our philosophy actually is. So the dharma of one man cannot truly be the dharma of another due to constitutional differences between one individual and another. The freedom and integrity of the parts inside the unity of the whole is the very soul and essence of the federal idea. So this is from where we get our federal idea and India has been a, a federal society from since ancient ages as sir also said. So dharma is the basis of our civilization as I said and dharma is the law of renunciation while right is the law of resistance. Dharma develops collectivism while rights develop individualism and so the emphasis on individualism in today's modern society. Dharma works for synthesis while right lives and grows in antithesis. We, we also look at the, uh, at the tradition of protest in our society. The young, youngsters usually get attracted to protest, to revolution, to rebel. But is that really our idea? Is that how society can, can be took forward? This is something that we as a generation need to ponder upon. Dharma is the soul of order while right, the parent of the revolution. Therefore, the generalizations of European experience gathered under the law of right cannot help one to interpret the character and culture of India trained in the ideal of dharma. So we have very conveniently adopted uh, the Bill of Rights and all the Western concepts in our constitution. But the argument being given by Bhutan Chandra Palji is the, is the very same thing that we need to ponder upon, that we need to think upon, that whether those will actually help us uh, move forward or are they working as a constraint in our development. Due to the prevalence of the idea of dharma, great diversities of both faiths and cultures have flourished in Hinduism. Hindu society is not a homogeneous unit, but a highly developed organic whole, which accepts and harmonizes the endless diversities of its component organisms. And this is, this is something that we, that, this is another thought for our concern. The present generation in Bharat cannot truly interpret Bharat because of our hybrid modern education. 
It has divorced our mind and spirit from the deeper realities of the life and thought of our own country. And it has also divided us into two camps of reformers and reactionaries. So we have been divided into two extremes, the reformers and the reactionaries. However, the real truth about Bharat lies in the traditional middle path of the sage and the philosopher. Now, uh, if we look at the European works that have been written about Bharat, we'll find that the very popular view about Bharat is that India is not a country but a continent. This has been, uh, this is, this was a very popular uh, way of looking at Bharat, uh, prevalent during our independence years, during our national struggle uh, years. Uh, he says that our distinctive geographical features, bewildering diversities of racial origin, as well as of languages and literature and cults and customs, combined to strengthen the first impression produced by the physical characteristics of the land upon the uninitiated stranger, that it is not a country but a continent. Again, because Europeans have had a mere physical contact, mere sense contact with our, uh, with our country, that they think that it is not a country but a continent. Uh, uh, kisi bhi desh ko na, uh, naam dene ka ek philosophy, ek, uh, it, there exists a level of evolution in the same. Jo pehla category hai, uh, the, the geographical names he classifies into three classes and the first category is physical origin and reference and that's how Europeans have named us India. We never really called us India or Hindustan. We have been from very long time Bharat Vash or Bharat. Ethnic or tribal origin, where we get Aryavarth or England. Naam milta hai. And pers person and historic origin and reference, those names include Rome and Bharat Vash. Now, wherever a country is commenced to be called after some great historic personage, especially some great king or potentate, whether real or legendary, there necessarily lies at the back of it a distinct historic or national consciousness. And this is something that we need to understand. Ki Bharat Varsh, agar hum khud ko address kar rahe as a Bharat Varsh, to ye naam bohat hi unique uh, evolutionary process se aya hua hai. And, there, and it reflects, the name itself reflects that we have had a tradition of national consciousness. The character is, the character of Bharati unity. As Dr. Singh also emphasized that our, 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 uh, our unity was not only territorial, but it was essentially cultural. And the difference between the European thought and Hindu thought is essentially that, that they emphasize on territorial unity while we emphasize on cultural unity. The unity of Bharat was neither just racial nor religious, nor political nor administrative. It was a peculiar type of unity which may best described as cultural. Now, now there is this, here is a very interesting thought on conversion of faiths. If we look at Abrahamic religions, they have had a practice of converting people to their faith. And that is how they have grown in the world. But we never find such practice in Hindu thought, in, in Hindu thought or Hindu dharma. Now, why is that? Because a Hindu understands that our faiths are the result of our inner temperament and outer education and experience. This change of temperament cannot be brought about in 